Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths, Most Wanted. Now today we are doing, well, the trebuchet, it's in the title already, and it's, well, it's been a busy time for From the Depths in general, there's lots of updates being released, it's Halloween, and I can barely keep up with everything that's happening, and I'm redoing pretty much all the ships that uh, need to be updated because of the all the updates. But we're taking a break from all that, uh, from all the news, and now we're going back to how to kill annoying things in this game. So here we are, the trebuchet. Possibly... Well, this thing is tied with the Eerie for most dangerous slash annoying Onyx Watchcraft. And... Yeah, that's basically... This thing is just, just hell of annoying if you're not prepared for it. And even if you are prepared for it, it's still annoying. So what is it? It is a... Basically, I guess you could call it a monitor, simply because it's not a particularly big ship. Um, I know some people are gonna, like, bark at me for, like, saying what's big and what's small, but I'd consider anything under 100 meters long to be not particularly big. So, it would say medium-sized ship, but it has a lot of guns on it, so... It is a front-sider, so it faces things head-on. And it's a bit of a glass cannon, so it's mostly offense and not a hell of a lot of defense, which uh, honestly is the way to go in this game. You kind of have to prioritize offense over defense. Okay, so what makes this thing really dangerous? Well, to start, well, you can see just by looking at it, it has a lot of guns. It has lots of big, lots of uh, guns. They're all very big and very scary. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five hundred millimeter uh, high explosive uh, APS cannons. It's got uh, four cram cannons in two turrets just on the side. It's got a wee little timed frag turret just on top for a little bit of anti air. Ignore the uh, paint bug, that's uh, rather persistent. And so it's got all this firepower, and one of the clever things about this craft, which I have to give begrudging respect to, is that the way it orientates itself. It can pretty much bring 100% of all its firepower to bear on one target, which is very effective and very efficient. This thing, well, for the amount of firepower this dishes out, this is quite cheap. It's uh, about uh, two, just over 200,000 material cost, and it puts out a lot of hurt. It is a very scary damage-dealing craft. But it's, uh, yeah, so this thing continually faces the target, and it's got a number of... Uh, fancy tricks to ensure that it does that. So, if you want to make a front a ship, here's kind of how to do it. So it's got a whole bunch of ACBs in here, so... Okay, so, no, that's the shield control. That's the shield control, so... Okay, so it's basically controlled via ACBs and complex controllers. So, the, the steering is controlled through complex controls, and there's the Ford... Well, whether it moves forwards or backwards is also controlled by that. And it doesn't have a naval AI, it has an aerial AI right here. Basically, begin attack run beyond 2,000 meters, a border attack run when blah blah blah, wait 15 seconds, and the ACBs here, so where's it? There, I'll activate complex control T, so that. So, it moves forward, I believe, if things are more than 1,500 meters away, and it moves backwards if they are closer than that. So, this thing sits somewhere on the annoying front-siding evolutionary line that starts with the paddle gunner, has the cobalt somewhere in there, and eventually ends up uh, at the, what do you call it? The singularity. Uh, this thing is along those lines, so just essentially backpedals back and forth, and blows you up a lot. So, it's not completely helpless on the defense front either, because it does have defenses. It has a reasonably strong LAM system. It's got two separate ones, actually, just uh, poked in the sides here. Not a lot of stored space. These run out of uh, energy quite quickly, but they are reasonably strong. I think they've got destabilizers in here somewhere, or not. Huh, interesting. So, this particular... One has, well, it does a lot of uh, pulse damage and tends to blow cram shells out of the air fairly easily, so 
Don't you... And also missiles. I've actually had a bit of trouble in my testing killing this thing with uh, below a certain amount of missiles. And I'm guessing still that lambs haven't been nerfed yet. Because... Oh, hey, this is interesting. Also, in case you're wondering, uh, lambs nodes have been tweaked. Lots more information shown on screen and you can customize them a lot more. So, only any altitude. Da -da 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 -da. Wait, is that really right? Oh, that's why it doesn't shoot at uh, submarines. Cool. Well, not submarines, uh, torpedoes. Targets all projectile types. You can mess with that. Minimal, minimum projectile diameter. Maximum range below which to engage. That. That is uh, still kind of bugged. I can't really see what it's saying right there. That's messed up. And you can set the color and it's all very nice. But anyway, so this thing has lambs systems and irritatingly there's an ACB on here which means you can't turn it off which is annoying because well I would like to turn it off because I'd like to because whenever you want to fight a particular craft it helps to use it as a target practice dummy and this one you unfortunately need to get in there and uh, find the stupid little thing where is it where is it? 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 It's somewhere around here. I think it's... If there is... A... Kind of benevolent god of FTD... Yes, Nick, I'm talking about you. There's a thing which turns the AI on and off. Can't find it. I should have looked... This is... Oh, right. This is it. So, I'm going to... Disable that. Set mainframe to combat, set mainframe to on, no. Okay, so now that's turned off and I can show you the lamb system. So, I'm going to spawn in something reasonably harmless, so... We'll spawn in a kingstead. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, let's try that again. Whoop, whoop. And kingstead. Yeah, so Lambs isn't amazing. But it is backpedaling quite nicely. And... Allow me to assist you there. This thing puts out a lot of pain. So it's only armed with like high explosive shells, but the size of them and the speeds at which it spits them out is plenty enough to hurt even heavily armored targets. Like you can see right here, it is stripping paint off the Kingstead quite handily. In fact, it's AI dead. Yep, it's AI dead. Stop that. And we're gonna do that, so. Where was I? I've already gone off script. So it also has reasonably decent shield coverage. So, not amazing shield coverage, like, pretty much no Onyx Watchcraft has, uh, shield, has, like, really crazy shields, but, come on, ah, shield protector, alpha, apply to all, and we're gonna spawn in our friend here, the Marauder. So, it only, ha it has three shields in total, but weirdly enough, uh, just gonna do that. Weirdly enough, these shields are strong enough and put in kind of exactly the right place to deflect a, quite a bit of shots. It just it covers the guns, stops kinetics from just uh, ripping the guns off immediately. So it's it, it's again like with a lot of Onyx Watchcraft, it's cunning shield placement rather than excessive and reasonably cunning, I guess. Like it's not always a good idea to put uh, shields on top of turrets. And what else? What else? It's also hard to sink. It's got quite a few PIDs uh, scattered in there, and if you... You probably would have seen, one, two, three, four... That it has the full Monty of uh, general purpose PIDs. It has roll, pitch, and air pump altitude, which is interesting. I think it has another one, like, controlling... Eh, I guess not. But in any case, this thing is not easy to sink. You basically need to... Uh, rupture every compartment and also you need to 
uh, disable its engine power in order to make it sync reliably. Okay, what else, what else? You would have noticed right here that uh, when the King State was shooting at it, it was aiming off to the sides rather than down the middle. And that is because this craft has aimpoint spoofing. Like pretty much every bloody craft. Sorry, I'm still meh, like annoyed about that. So here we have ammo barrels off to the side, which is the way to do it with the uh, front siders. Because what that means is, it's a little bit similar to the Iron Cordon, actually, and other craft of that ilk, is that if something is right in front of it, it is shooting kind of past it. So this thing also shimmy, well, it's doing it right now, it's shimmying from side to side a little bit, and that kind of throws off uh, the aim, the AI's aim slightly. And also there's not a hell of a lot here, which is incredibly valuable. I mean, there's the LAM system, there's a cram cannon, but... Uh, the main guns tend to be safe, so yeah, it's like it's quite it's it's the usual annoyingly cunning aimpoint spoofing. Uh, not flawless, however, because it also has uh, ammo hidden somewhere in front. I think yeah, here it is. So things tend to aim at either the sides, in which case they uh, aim uh, past all the things they should be hitting, or they aim for the front, which is not a heck of a lot better, because you will see here that um, it's uh, quite heavily armored in the front. Again, quite reminiscent of the Iron Cordon. is one, two, three, four, technically five layers of metal here. So this, so if we go here, and we uh, do this. So the armor around here is quite thick. It is roughly in the 50 to 60 range from the front, so not an easy craft to damage head-on. So, what else, what else, what else? So, smoke. Ah, yes, it has smoke. So, people have tried to tell me that lasers are the best thing against the Onyx watch because they don't use smoke. That isn't entirely true. They're not particularly well smoked, but they do have it. And this particular smoke system is a kind of, well, the laser warner is disabled, so presumably this thing was built before laser warners were nerfed, so they have to actually see outside the craft. But it does have smoke uh, here, I think, it doesn't really have smoke anywhere else. But if it does, uh, the smoke is triggered, it tends to hang around for a while, because this thing doesn't backpedal very fast. And getting back to the armor, sorry, off script again, this thing, I was surprised when I dissected this thing just how thick the armor is around the side. So, if we do this, on the front it is 5 meters thick, in fact, if you, if anything hits this block right here, it's like, gonna have a miserable time, because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 layers of metal on that line right there. Only 2 over here, but that's fine. And so it is five layers of metal right on the front, on the sides, here, past the turning props, one, two, three, four, five again, and then it goes down to three, or four, and then one, two, three, and then one, two. So on the sides, even on the sides it has two layers of metal, which is quite strong, well, a layer of alloy and a layer of metal, which still isn't particularly bad armor, I'd say. Two layers of material, regardless of what it is, is the minimum amount of armor you have, or should have rather. And armor right here is also reasonably thick, so little slope blocks don't have as much armor. One, two, three, four. Even like count it, this metal beam is layered lengthways, so I can never remember if that means that it's the armor stacking bonus is four times. Actually, we can find that out right now. Right now, I say, so... Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to. It should have more armor than that. But yeah, so it's pretty well armored, like, almost all the run. Even on the back, it has reasonably thick armor. So you see right here where the AI and other juicy stuff is, it's one, two, three, four layers of metal. So, pretty well armored around the waterline, all around. And I've mentioned the little AI gun before, so this thing isn't helpless against aircraft. Uh, it also has repair tentacles, I happen to notice. So if it does that thing, which uh, Onyx Watchcraft are quite likely to do, actually, which is spawn in very close to each other, 
It has a habit of repairing other things. And now I, I seem to have lost them. Where are they? Hello? I know you're there. Spot- Oh, there you are. Okay, so lots of ammo processors. Uh, lots of repair tentacles, surge protectors. Not easy to deal with by em with EMP either, I should mention. Dun -dun -dun. And here is the shells it's using. It's quite nasty, actually. So, I think these turrets are actually not quite the same, I think, by the looks of it. What is that? That is... Do this. This is a... Trying to see what kind of thing this is. So that is one, two, three, four. Four meter shell. Over here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight meter shell. Okay. So what we have here is the one that's in the back, and that is a pretty standard high explosive shell. Lots of uh, high explosive, inertial base leader, and also quite fast as well, 489 meters per second. Tends to catch things that are not quite fast enough to escape it. Here's the other one, which is only slightly slower, the two guns in front. Lots of high explosive damage. 6,000 explosive damage is a lot for an APS shell. And it also has a super captivation base, which is uh, lovely, which means this thing actually can shoot at submarines, which I didn't realize before, and it also has smoke. What the hell, I didn't know that either. So it tends to shut down LAM systems as well. It's basically that every time I look at this thing, I am more annoyed by it, because it's just, ugh, 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 so good, so well made and thought out, but annoying. And here is the little AA, uh, ammunition, which I think is about 90 degrees, a yeah, pretty nasty little shell, actually, because, let's see, 180, 180, 180, 135, 90, so, yeah, it's a pretty reasonably good at... Uh, dealing with anything that can't uh, shoot off the AA gun fast enough. But enough of that, we've blathered on for about 15 minutes by how nasty and annoying this thing- Can you stop wiggling from side to side? Nope, it's still doing it. Why are you doing that? That's most irritating. Okay, so what are the weaknesses of this craft? Well, for a start- Well, no, let's not do that yet. You will notice that all the guns point forward, and the lambs point forward, and the shields are on the front. So from the back, it has not nothing but considerably less. If it's uh, if you're behind it, the only things that can shoot at you is this big turret at the back here, the little turret on top, uh, the two cram turrets, and that's it really. Which is still a pretty decent amount of firepower, but nothing compared to uh, when these two turrets get into play. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to be very mean, and I'm going to spawn in two craft behind this thing. So if we go here... Do, 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 1,500 meters away. Actually, what the hell should I spawn? Well, you know what, I'm just going to spawn in uh, something that I know is going to get destroyed by this immediately. A thing called... Which one should I do? This one. This is the beast. It's a, it's an airship armed with crams. It's not going to win this fight, but I am going to spawn two of them just for giggles. Because I hate the trebuchet, and the trebuchet deserves to suffer. Uh, watch the tre this is probably going to demonstrate more than anything how the trebuchet will win against both of these guys, but uh, yeah, it's uh, something we have to live with. How's our game speed? One, two, three, four. The uh, FTD's been a little bit laggy on me lately, so if we do that... That. Yep, already damaged. So you see, if you can split this thing's fire, survivability is improved quite well. I forgot the beast has smoke. And the sooner you destroy the turrets on this thing, the better. You do not want this craft shooting at you. Well, at all if you can help it, but uh, for a long time especially. 
It's pretty much like all front siders. If it's having to deal with multiple craft, it is not doing as well. Also, it helps to make your craft erratic, because even far shells have a little bit more trouble uh, hitting things that are bouncing around unpredictably. And I'm actually impressed that both beasts are only getting scratch damage right now. Wee! Wee! Fun! Slow motion! Trebuchet! Fight! This is not a fair fight, by the way. The beast almost costs as much as the trebuchet. But to compensate, it eats a lot less money. Also, I'm amazed at how the trebuchet is missing. So yeah, you can make a dodgy craft that can dodge a trebuchet. It's just not particularly easy because, well, fast shells. And I think, uh, I can't tell what's happening past all the smoke, but I think... Nope, we haven't blown up uh, any of the turrets yet. Which uh, probably brings me to my next point. Which I'm skipping ahead a little bit, is that uh, armor-piercing weapons are a really good idea against the trebuchet because you want to kill the guns as fast as possible. This thing doesn't do well against heat or hash or penetration depth fuses. Ah, there we go. I should mention that the shells that the beasts are firing uh, does have a penetration depth fuse, but not a lot of armor-piercing. So it's just occasionally to sink just a little bit deeper into an enemy craft. But yeah, so there's one turret going up. So yeah, if you are struggling with a trebuchet, try and outnumber it. Just surround it with stuff that you know can get through its armor. Okay, so it also cannot defend itself, and I just figured this out. And they're prob naturally, the devs are probably going to fix this, like, very soon. The thing is not as good against submarines... As you might think, it does have super captivation bases. And I'm going to spawn in a sub which I've managed to rescue from the scrap heap. No, not that one. There we are. The cooler! Say hello to the new improved cooler. We'll go way over here. We're spawning in two of them because otherwise this is going to take forever. And if my calculations are correct, uh, the lamb shouldn't be able to hit these torpedoes because, well... They've rigged to not hit underwater targets. It's also worth mentioning that uh, the guns don't have incredibly good elevation. Although, jeez, like, if you do have submarines fighting against it, it's best to keep them at a distance, because those super captivation shells can will really ruin your day otherwise. And these torpedoes are going to blow each other up, most likely. Let's just check. Are the torpedoes closing in? Yes, they are. Oh, yeah, the game is... One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. There we go. Full speed. Coolers have not been hit yet. Okay. Never mind. They can hit it. That's annoying. Oh, wait. No, no, no. That's, uh, that's the coolers, lasers. So you see that most of these, uh, only the front gun can actually hit them, and that's the problem with sticking guns on an elevation like this. It, uh, means you can't really... Okay, so now you see, lambs ain't doing anything. And this is why you've got to stagger out your torpedoes, because they can destroy each other otherwise. Incidentally, torpedoes do a lot more damage than they used to. So, worth keeping in mind. What else, what else? So, beam riders are good. Uh, the new, uh, what are they called? Re remotely guided torpedoes also work very well. I don't think any faction craft have uh, signal jammers yet. Oh, look at that. All the dams. All the damage. Still slow going, though. The coolers don't have a huge amount of torpedoes. But that's okay. We're chipping away at it slowly but surely. You get a bigger submarine to do this and it'll just wreck it in no time flat. What was I talking about? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, so gun elevation is important. If you get right below or right above this thing, 
it's a little bit easier to... Well, it can't shoot you, basically. And it doesn't matter that uh, the crams can aim all the way up, because crams aren't good against fast aircraft, and they're not good against submarines, either. Apparently, depth charges are a thing, but in this case, the trebuchet doesn't use them. Yep, and there goes turret number one. So, in, just in general, torpedoes are a bit of a weakness of this craft, especially now. Uh, the lambs nodes are probably going to get tweaked at some point to... to kind of to shoot at torpedoes again, but I'm not sure when that's happening. So, yeah. I should actually show you, like, we get the idea, like, torpedoes can do the job. So, what? Da -dun -da -dun -da -dun. And so, of all things, you'll be surprised to learn that a deepwater guard craft can actually deal with a... Let's restart the designer. Just to get the torpedoes out of the water. And we're going to spawn in the trebuchet again, and surprisingly, something that can kill it. On the deep water guard side. I know, it's weird. So, it doesn't aim up straight well, and that little anti-aircraft gun that it has on top of it is very, very fragile and volatile. It will use so much as sneeze at it, and it will die. So, of all things that can take it down, we have the flying aircraft carrier. The Barracuda. I was surprised as well. The Barracuda itself gets destroyed, but the little Super Tweeties on it? Why did I spawn that in on my bloody... oh well. That'll do the trick. So as you can see, the Barracuda itself is getting... wrecked. But these little erratic planes are not only dodging the big guns, but they're also dodging the small one quite well as well. And as soon as they get behind it, those cram shells can get through. Five. So you see, these main guns, these main APS guns, are now going to have a bit of trouble aiming and firing at these little guys. And behind it, it has no lambs coverage. Which makes life a lot harder for it. So, if so, it's like other Onyx Watch ships, you can swarm them with small aircraft. You just got to make sure that your aircraft carrier... Let's go have a look at the Barracuda. You gotta make sure that your aircraft carrier is big APS proof, or very fast, or something. Okay, so, so concerned. Da, 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 gun, da, 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 da. It's also possibly the biggest weakness of this craft is, and I'm just gonna delete this because you get the idea. Uh, they'll get bombed to pieces eventually, so I'm going to do this now, spawning in the trebuchet back and forth, like a madman. Like a madman, I say! I'm mad! <laughs> We're all mad here. So we're over here now, and that is not what I wanted to do. Are you freaking... Three, four... Okay, so here we have... Actually, not what I wanted to do. I just wanted to do this. So, this is quite a volatile craft because the shells on it, they have no safety fuses, they have no ejectors, they're stuffed full of ammo clips, and they have no internal turret armoring, so if we do say this, and we save that right there. If we poke this out for everybody to see, you'll see, yep, there's no internal turret armor. In fact, a large amount of this turret, the inner workings of it, is above deck, so... Worth noting right there. Not that, oh uh, yeah, yeah. So, what does this mean? It means that when this craft... Uh, loses a turret if the gets hit in the clips, so to speak. Uh, it goes up like a candle, and it's got reasonably thick armor like all around it. So one, two, three layers of metal on top. Actually, less than, less than that. It's got one and two layers of metal on top of it. It's got one, two, three, one, two, three layers on the side and quite a bit on the front. So one, two. Three, except this is technically more than one, because it's a slope put lengthwise. But in any case, uh, if this thing goes up, it goes up like a freaking candle. 
as you would have... Well, you've kind of already seen that uh, with me blowing it up, and for some reason my explosion tool uh, doesn't work for some reason. Explosion... Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, my explosion debug tool does not work for some reason, so I can't show it that way. But I can go on a suicide mission by doing this. One, two, three, four. Yeah, also the cockpit is like... Uh, directly in behind one of the turrets. Which is great, which means I'm going to do this now. No! I was about to climb up a freaking wall. So, uh, kaboom. And again. Don't try this at home, kids. Oh, come on. You know what? There's a scientific way to do this. And that is this. Right, so when the turret... the Jeez, that took way longer than I wanted it to. When the turret goes up, it goes up uh, big time. Not quite enough to take out the turret surrounding it, but still, that is a massive hole right in it. And let's see here. Does it damage anything in particular? No, it doesn't. Huh. In any case, when the turret goes up, it goes up all at once. That took way longer than it should have in order to demonstrate. Should have done the ammo barrel trick from the beginning. And going along with that, and conveniently enough, there's a nice little preview of it right here. Uh, the deck armor right next to the guns is only one meter thick. It is alloy. Whoopsie daisy, it's only one layer thick. So, we go in here, here's a little compartment, one layer of metal, and uh, we're straight into the guts of a gun right here. So, one layer of metal, uh, air gap, one layer of alloy. So, if explosions do land on the deck, so, say, right next to the gun, for instance, if it's a particularly strong one, so if it's like, well, if it's like a large missile, or large APS shell, or even a cram shell, what happens is the shell can land right here, it takes out this little alloy layer, takes out this little me metal layer, and whoopsie daisy, it's uh, taking out the ammo clips as well, which tends to blow this gun up. So plunging fire tends to work quite well at popping the guns quickly, and especially if you don't use aim point selection, because it won't be distracted by the stupid little ammo barrels fooling you off to the side. So yeah, that is the weaknesses of this craft. Hey, exactly 15 minutes on strengths and weaknesses. Go me. Okay, so how do you survive this damn thing? That is, uh, the short answer involves shields. Now, bear in mind that shields are not as good as they used to be. In fact, currently they're quite crap at doing their job because there is an advanced cannon nerf planned for the future which will slow the fire rate down of particularly big advanced cannons by a lot. So, shields currently don't do their job particularly well, and uh, a lot of uh, advanced cannon shots will get through them. So, that being said, they are better than nothing, and to demonstrate that, I'm going to uh, throw the trebuchet. Two, five, just turning that. I'm going to throw the trebuchet at the craft, which is infamous for its shields. Just to show you what I mean. So, not that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not my team. If I own a trebuchet, I don't want it to get blown up. This is simple, people. This is simple. Simple, straightforward. So, over here, we now have. We're just gonna go away over here. We're gonna point this way, and we're gonna spawn in uh, one of my ships. Well, it's not really my ship, it is a ship that I converted. So, where are we are, uh, convert a craft. The Kramfreighter, and this should look familiar. It is a perforator, but the particle cannon has been replaced with a cram gun, and it's had all the missiles removed, so it's actually down to the not so reasonable price of 400, uh, like 400,000 materials instead of 
whatever the heck it was before, which is like 500,000, half a million. So all that's going to happen here is, is that we are going to look at the Clamphorator as it gets shot. So, wish it luck. Not my best work, I have to admit. It's, this thing is not as good as the original Perforator. Not at all. So we're at half speed. Shells coming in. Are the shields ready? There you go. So, these are like... Oh god, what happened? So you'll see here that... Uh, the shields do help. They help quite a bit. But there's a limit to how much they help. And uh, shells do slip through. That being said, if you're up against a trebuchet, it's a, a little bit of protection is better than nothing. The fact that some shells are getting through, well, some aren't, and that's all that matters, really. So you can see right there, big explosions, the uh, hull is being stripped right here in particular. In fact, this gun is probably not going to last much longer. And I should probably show off, like, uh, the arrangement on this craft right here. So that is a very good idea, just lots of layered shields. Just to deal with the absolute hell that uh, this darn thing spouts. Also, low freeboard also helps because uh, if the shells bounce off the water, it means they whistle over you. Oh wait, 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 I want to see what my cram shells do. How's the trebuchet doing actually? Not great. So, it turns out if you fight fire with fire, it works. If you just throw, like, huge amounts of frag shells at the trebuchet, like most things, it will die. Also, if you throw big cram shells at it, it will also pro thank you for obscuring the action. It's okay, though. They missed. They missed. Okay, so you understand that, and I'll show you what the shield arrangement on this thing is. I can't uh, take any credit for it, unfortunately, because this is Hikari's work. Uh, hi, Hikari, how are you doing, you evil, evil, beautiful person? So let's go turn you off, and we're gonna spawn in our friend, the Marauder. Turn you off as well. We're gonna set the game speed back to its regular shape. Go there. And is this thing on? I don't know. Alpha, fly to all. Okay, so I've shown this off before, but just in case you need to see it again, this is what the perforator shield arrangement looks like, and it is kind of insane. Uh, overlapping butterfly shields like this aren't as effective as they used to be, because uh, the angle shields are at matters a lot less in whether they work or not. But still, angling like this means that instead of one layer of shields, a uh, trebuchet shell has to get past one, two, three, four. Like, depending on the angle, it can be like four or five layers of shields, which is completely ridiculous. And frankly, I hate it. I hate that you need to set up shields something like this in order to catch ABS shells. I think one layer should be able to do the trick. But uh, that is not what the devs are planning, so that's not what's going to happen. So. Good shields, that's basically all you need, but uh, if your craft fly fast enough, or high enough, or even low enough, so aforementioned you get, uh, if you have something that flies incredibly fast, so let's demonstrate that again, there's lots of demos in this uh, in this episode, it's quite fun actually. So if we go here, where, uh, where are you trebuchet, uh, trebuchet, oui oui, trebuchet is a French word, hope you guys know. And if you don't know what the original trebuchet is, look it up. It is a big, scary medieval siege engine, which is amazing. Uh, most powerful uh, form of siege weaponry prior to the invention of cannons. So, pretty awesome stuff. So, let's go here. Nator, lightning hoods. And we'll get our old friend out. I've suddenly... The funny thing is, is that... Uh, you, like, by no you should know what I'm going to pull out here, by the way. It's the Hypatos. The Hypatis is actually featured in more Most Wanted than pretty much any other craft, really, and that's purely because it's such a good example of a very fast craft armed with, well, laser weapons. It's basically all it is. So, Trebuchet's shells are pretty fast, but not quite fast enough to catch this thing. So, especially once it gets over it. And also, let's go here. 
Trebuchet does not have functional smoke, really, so smoke isn't triggered. And once the Hypothesis is straight over it, it can't really shoot at it, except with the tiny little happy gun. One, two, three, four, five, and... Lasers do work pretty well against it, so usual story, armor-piercing nonsense. It's gonna snipe the AI in the back there, and the shells aren't fast enough to catch uh, something that moves at about 160 meters per second. So, super fast craft can evade a trebuchet quite nicely. In fact, what I think is going to happen now is the Hypatos is just going to pop all these guns off in the AI, assuming it starts aiming properly. One, two, three, six, seven, eight. Okay, so you see here, lasers, huge your story, strip blocks off like crazy, don't really care about armor much. Yeah, you get the idea. Trebuchet is not going to win that one. And let's set this back to regular, and back on the ocean floor, and above the ocean floor. And missiles being very loud in my ear. Okay, so what else? So, yeah, extreme altitude, extreme speed. Another defense against the trebuchet. So, okay, how do you kill it? Well, the good news is, is that uh, anything that can damage it can be used to kill it. Which is sounds pretty self-evident, but... In particular, what does well against uh, is any form of armor-piercing weaponry. So, there's not a lot of Hesh faction craft I can use to show off, but things like Heat, Hesh, armor-penetrating shells, so, like, pen-depth cram shells, that kind of thing, that works pretty dang well, because you need to get through the deck armor, get through one or two layers of metal, and then pop the turrets off. That's the fastest way to kill it. And you need to kill the guns before they kill you, because, as I said, you do not want the trebuchet shooting at you for any length of time, because it really, really hurts. And shields only last so much, so last so long and do so much. So, you essentially have to beat it at its own game. Uh, just lots of firepower. And you can use smoke to shut down the lamb system, and plunging fire missiles to exploit the deck armor. So, to show that off, and this should uh, be a real treat. It would be hilarious if this actually works. So we're going to have the trebuchet fight a submarine that's just going to chuck lots of missiles at it. Because that's fun. That's very fun. And so way down here, we're going to spawn our old favorite. Uh, which is the... I think that's... Uh, that's uh, I was about to spawn in the black current. But let's spawn in the typhoon. Let's spawn in two typhoons. Typhoon. I missed it. Where is it? Where is it? There. Typhoon. There we go. And we're going to spawn them on the white players because that's funny. Two typhoons, which are very expensive because they've got a lot of missiles on them. Oh, look at that. They're red. So lots of torpedoes, lots of missiles. Probably can't keep up that fire rate at all because missiles are very expensive. And hopefully you'll be able to see right here that the lambs on the on the trebuchet only lasts so long. So it's popping missiles like crazy. Not quite enough to deal with this particular swarm. And away goes that uh, first turret. For the very reason that I think happened. It must have gotten in through the deck. Or warped through blocks as well. Which is a classic way to... Uh, no, no, it got done from underneath. A torpedo did that. So this is actually the second time in this video I'm showing torpedoes wrecking this thing's uh, steez. Yeah, things are despawning now. Whee! So that's basically it for how to kill the trebuchet is... How to fight it is essentially kill it before it can kill you. Uh, either be shielded to hill and back, or be out of its reach entirely. In fact, now nah, I'm not going to show off my orbital bomber because that's cheesy as hell. So yeah, I hope that helps because frankly, I say again, even if you know all this stuff, uh, the trebuchet is still like a tremendously irritating craft to fight against because, and this is a good thing to end off, it tends to, it goes 
It violates the usual Onyx Watch doctrine of craft, because most Onyx Watch ships, and uh, the Bulwark is a prime example of this. Uh, computer, hang in there. So, over here we have the Bulwark, which is... Hey, this was the first most wanted I ever did. Woohoo! So the Bulwark is possibly the most Onyx Watch of the Onyx Watch ships. It is, it's big, it's slow, it's tanky, and it has powerful, slow-firing weaponry. That's their modus operandi. I think that's the word. That's the way they usually do things, right? The trebuchet, well, the bulwark in particular, it's not super heavily armored, but it's just, I don't know, the compartmentalization and uh, redundancy makes it quite hard to kill. The trebuchet is not built like that, not at all. It does not have much redundancy. Uh, if it suffers critical hits, it doesn't bounce back from it. It doesn't fi keep fighting well. If it loses its ammo, like if it loses most of its ammo stores, it can't fire. If it loses a turret or two, it is greatly weakened and very heavily damaged. It's got thick armor around the waterline, but it's got glaring weak points elsewhere. It's quite compact, and it prioritizes firepower over defense, unlike the Bulwark and other Onyx Watch ships. So this is why this is scary. This is not a typical Onyx Watchcraft, and you shouldn't treat it like one. This is essentially ten floating guns with decorations surrounding them, keeping them afloat. So, on that note, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and I will see you next time in From the Depths, Most Wanted. Go blow up a trebuchet and, well, you can tell me how you did it. Farewell!